Hey everyone, and welcome to Conversations for Peace, day 18. And I, of course, am Marcy Newman, your Heart Shift Coach, and I've been continuing on a daily basis to look at peace, not as something that's abstract and unrelatable to us, but rather something that we can intentionally cultivate. And through my own sharings with you, and of course, some of the wonderful guests that I've had here, um, we've been talking about all these different ways to reconnect with the truth of our being. And that's, of course, where we find peace. It's in our true nature. It's not out there in the craziness of the world that's all around us. I have the joy of having Joseph Mercado on our show today. Joseph, thank hey, you for being here. Yeah, so uh, great to have you. Thank you so much. Such a pleasure. I really enjoy our, our talks and conversations. And, you know, you're such a wonderful soul, always out there touching lives and just connecting with different hearts and, you know, vibrational resources. And I just want to say thank you so much for having me here today. Um, well, thank you for that. And it's always such a pleasure for me too. The one thing I always feel about you is this incredible connection to, of course, our dear Gaia, Mother Earth. And what can be more peaceful, right, than to just sort of be nestled into her bosom. Yes. And yeah, so for everybody who maybe is new to what Joseph does, he's very much connected to the earth with different herbs and um, earthly medicines and uh, things of true nature. And so it was perfect, of course, for us to get together with this topic, which is of our true nature. And so, Joseph, let's jump in. What is peace to you? I love that question, Marcy, and thanks again. Is you know, peace can have various definitions to you know various mindsets and spirits, and you know this morning I felt you know something came straight from the heart and in the divine cosmos, and I wanted to just just read and, and and speak upon what peace is. So I'm gonna read what I what I wrote this morning here in my Please. prayer meditation. Mm. What is peace? Peace is the silent measure that exists within the internal space between the heart, the mind, and consciousness. For peace is the stillness of thought, allowing one to communicate with the nature from within one's soul. Peace is the non-egotistical broadcast that is a direct connection to the source and requires no words. For it is present, demonstrating the state of silence, yet listening to the echoes of nature and the voice of God without any external distractions. Peace is the e eternal experience of soundlessness as it is soft in the spirit, reflecting an angelic awareness through infinite love and divine compassion derived from a cosmic resonance. For me, this is peace. So we just take a moment and just relax in a moment of silence and peace for us to explore the stillness of thought from within. And through our breath, we exhale and allow that peace to mirror match both our internal environment to our external atmosphere. For it is peace that perseveres above all states of anguish, depression, anxiety, chaos, for the distractions that, lead, that look to keep us from being constructive within ourselves is where we, need, we really need more of peace, especially in today's times. People are looking for it in so many different directions on the compass, north, east, west, and south, but the compass is internal. For it is forever there all we need to do is just tap in. And for those wondering where this peace comes from, again, it's within you. And we need so much more of it coming together in community as a whole, because this universe is so divine, the source is at our fingertips, it's within us through the electricity that we experience in our bodies. 
Peace is an absolute must. Peace just is. Peace is something that when we create for ourselves, it is felt through the heart of others. For one who is genuine with oneself can experience the sincerity throughout the universe that mends in the different elements for us to synchronize with those aspects of life throughout this wonderful journey. So for all those who go through things in life, whether it's a struggle in the mind, tugging at the spirit, or feel like there's just no way out, look from within, still the mind, feel free of your emotions, not get caught up in the web or the entanglement of the strut. For it is peace that is the enabler of love within one's life. And that's my basic definition on peace, Mossy, for those that are hearing. Nothing basic about that, Joseph. <laughs> I could feel it like reverberating through my whole body, like somebody had just like hit a gong. And, and I, I could just feel the energy in waves like moving through me. And I was immediately transported into a place of peace where there was nothing else around me. I had trouble keeping my eyes open. I had this sensation of my heart just expanding and becoming soft and energy flowing through it. Um, I didn't want your words to end, and yet I almost didn't need them mm. because the reverberation was, was really taking me. What a beautiful experience that was, and I can't thank you enough for sharing that. Thank you, Mossy. Whew. Mm. Really, really, really moved me deeply, deeply. Oh, I'm so glad, you know, we all need that. You know, we all yeah. need that when we try and that, that energy exchange is so important. And you're right. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, I can just feel it all like just coming in, right? Everything just coming right in. I, I need to ask you, like, how, how have you come to this place? Because I, I know a bit about you. We've talked before and I know that you know, you weren't always in this place of such depth of connection to Gaia, to your heart. And like, how, how did you bring yourself here? I think you're, honestly, you're like soul's lessons that you have to share with us are, are so valuable. Yes. Oh, well, thank you for stating that, Mossy. And um, you know, like I said, I have to say, you know, I discover that peace is in the breath. And from what I've discovered that peace being in the breath within the human body, for what we inhale and exhale, you know, I find to discover that we have to often or sometimes in this life go through some realms of darkness in order to discover the light, to really appreciate what peace really is. So how can we appreciate the peace without understanding its opposition, oppositional force? And going through different trials and tribulations in life, you know, whether it's through, you know, channeling through things in my mindset or wrestling against the principalities with my own internal energies, you know, confronting situations of the unaware, or maybe it's going through some, you know, losing loved ones or having a near life death experience through car accidents or finding myself where not knowing if I'm going to wake up the next day. You know, these moments have allowed me to really, again, discover that there is something greater than the darkness that we experience. But through that portal, there are beams of light. And there, it's almost as if there, there and it's not even that as if, it's, there is that, that light that shines from above. And that we get in positions in life through our decisions that we don't, leave us much of a choice, but to look up and, and, and ask and, and seek those answers. And that's what I, I feel is really going through those, those realms of darkness is what's helped really 
really f seek the peace and knowing that I don't have to find it outside anywhere else. It's not in a building. It's, it's not um, at a store. You know, it's not in other people who may not have it or we think that they have it. It's, it's always, it's always within, you know, our, our system is, is the lighthouse. You know, we are the lantern of light for it is within. And for as long as we keep that lantern lit and that fire going, we could always see the way, no matter how dark the path gets. That's why not only do we need ourselves and God, we need each other. So Joseph, how do we cultivate this ability to be aware in our own journey? Because, you know, I'm sure that there are a lot of people who are listening to this and have listened to the other previous conversations for peace that I've been offering and, you know, have a reaction of, you know, that's great for them. And, you know, sure, you know, easy for them to say, or they kind of look at, you know, this whole thing being very woo woo and um, not being achievable for them. And not even being I don't want to use the word relevant because of course it's relevant and everyone is aware that they are seeking peace, even in the midst of chaos. It's like, oh my God, you know, just relieve me of this weight, this pain, this suffering, whatever it is. Um, and maybe not in those words, right? But certainly in that desire. So, how do we bring ourselves to that level of understanding that each of these situations are actually opportunities? Um, Gregory Johnson spoke about that and, you know, the conversation that I had with him and, you know, also a whole like plethora, right, of these life experiences that sometimes will bring us to our knees and we have to decide whether or not we're going to stand up again. That's right. Yes. And I think a lot of people are experiencing that right now. Mm -hmm. There's a tremendous amount of loss. And I think that whether we're aware of it or not, we are all on some level grieving this, this loss. Yes. How do we do this? How do we create that greater connection, um, cultivate that awareness that there is something better waiting for us. It's a really powerful statement and a very good question. And I do agree with you what you're saying about Gregory's message. I did get to listen in a little bit. It was very powerful. So I want to make a note of that. And um, to answer your question, you know, I really, I really feel deep down inside in order to deal with these adversities in life or loss that we, we really need to tap in to what's going on internally in here. And to do that, you know, we must, we must still the mind of thought and not be so all over the place and getting caught up of the realms of society. And in order to do that actively and effectively, we need to not just take effort, but execute a viable action. And I, and I do that in, with exercises such as meditation, breathing exercises, sometimes stretching, and just maybe putting on some meditation, music in the background to synchronize the cells in our body with our mind and what we're doing and where we want to be and where we want to go and the places that we don't want to be a part of, we want to leave within us, such as an emotion, let's say like stress, anxiety, depression, anger, you know, so... I find the best ability to do that is to be in a, in a quiet in the mind in a quiet room or a quiet place, find something meditational and just focus on a single pinnacle point, like a white dot that's in front of you in, in the atmosphere or the universe. And just focus on that one single dot and nothing else and clear the mind. And, and it's just you and that white dot, that white dot being the source, that white light. And once you see that white light, you will see that you become that white light. But we have to be free from distraction in order to discover the nature from within to reach that God consciousness, that Christ consciousness, and that awareness. Because you're right, we are aware. 
there's so much distraction again. It keeps us from getting deeper into that awareness. But at the same time, it's like, it's right there. It's visible to be seen on, on, on the slate. And it's taking that time to remove what doesn't need to be and to focus on what is and what, what is intended for us here to get to that place of peace and provision. Mm. Meditation, repetition, because I believe that that redundancy is what's going to help embed into our conscious and subconscious mind for it to become a like second nature or a redundant daily habit. But through self, through that is comes self hypnosis. So when you have redundancy, self hypnosis, really, what are we hypnotized by? By our own quietness, our own stillness of thought is what we become hypnotized by. So it's more of like a spiritual, you know, hypnotic practice that allows us to engage and start to elevate into different areas within ourselves so that when we do come back down to this linear life, this place where we have to engage in our physical reality, we know how to deal with those things and we understand that through our mental stimulus, there is a space between that and our response. And sometimes that response is not always responding to somebody else. It's how we respond to ourselves before opening up our mouth to deliver those words into the passageway of somebody else's ears and mind. Mm. So again, meditation, redu uh, redundancy, and self-hypnosis are the keys and the tools that are necessary, vital, and essential for us to make it through. Fantastic um, recommendation. And I just want to point out to people, should they be a little taken aback by self-hypnosis? What am I going to be plucking around like a chicken? And the truth is, is that we are in a trance very often without even realizing it. Like how many times have you been driving down the street, right? And you realize, oh my God, my exit was, you know, two behind me. Or you find yourself completely like engrossed in a conversation in your head that happened years ago. And you're just, you know, rehashing that whole thing. Or you sit in front of the television for hours at a time, or it's, it can happen with anything, right? Yeah. That, that governs our attention, our full attention. And so what you're saying is that rather than that working against us, we can use it to work for us to support what it is that we want. And essentially what you're saying, I think, is that this ability to use that self-hypnosis really requires just one thing. And that is to take ourselves outside of the outside environment. We have to intentionally take ourselves into a different place and allow what actually comes naturally to take us deeper and deeper. Um, and of course, the paradox of spirit is always that simultaneously it's higher and higher. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Unlimited ascension. <laughs> yeah, how beautiful. Well, you've shared some really beautiful, beautiful things with us today. Thank and you. both your heart, which always leaves me stunned. Um, and just in this state of pure gratitude that I know that you're on this earth, anchoring in these incredible energies. And I'm so appreciative of that and all that you do. And so thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. And I just want to say one thing, just like you were saying before with that self hypnosis and really what it always, you know, I always believe in, in life. We go back to the basics, you know, the roots of things. And I feel for that, this, you know, that practice, to really be effective, it, it does reflect on our own um, level of self-discipline. So discipline being the key word in order for that um, precision of focus, you know, to really marinate in our mind and our conscious awareness, you know, so that we can, you know, be the living force, the force of life that is. And I just want to, just want to make a note of that. Yeah. We come back to intention, 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 yep. you know, it's like real estate. They're always saying location, location, location. It is intention, intention, intention. And the moment that we step into alignment with our intention, as you said, which is actually a, an act of discipline, it's like the whole universe just 
you know, lays itself at our feet and says, well, okay, this one or this one or this one or that one. And we suddenly find that we have all of these um, just incredible opportunities to continue to realign with our true nature and the peace that is always available to us. Absolutely. I'm with you 100% on that, Mossy. <laughs> yeah. So tell me, Joseph, how can everybody find you? Uh, everybody can find me on uh, Facebook. They can be with Joseph Mercado. They can look up my, my plan, uh, Planergy, my, my plant company. Uh, Planergy has its own Facebook page, or they can go directly to my, direct, my blog directory, which is global, uh, which is MMU, which stands for Mastermind University, which can be found at mastermunduniverse.net. And, you know, they could, um, they could even put up MMU, uh, Mastermind University, in the, in the Google search engines, and, you know, they'll, they'll come to find me on also LinkedIn. Um, and there on LinkedIn is Joseph Mercado. And, you know, if, um, and they could also reach out, you know, personally, you know, to my email, if that's okay, if I can leave my email. Of course. That's all right, Marcy. Um, so, yeah, my email I can reach me at is Mercado, M-E-R-C-A-D-O, J's and Joseph at masterminduniverse.net. So yeah. I'll repeat that one more time. It's Mercado J as in Joseph at masterminduniverse.net. And they can go feel free to take a look at the website, masterminduniverse.net, which they'll also find my, uh, my, my contact number on there as well. Fantastic. And we'll also have that information posted here. And it reminds me also, I want to um, recommend to anyone who hasn't yet gotten their copy of Seven Ways to Cultivate Peace or a copy of the Peace Pledge, which I'm about to recite for you, um, please go to heartshiftcoach.com. And that of course is free for you to access. I'm hoping that you'll join me in this. Awesome, thank you. Crusade for peace. Yes. And, um, and so I'm just going to recite this pledge and to everyone just know that this is really um, my gift to you. And yet I know it's your gift to me as you are receiving it. So here we go. All right. I pledge to extend peace into my entire circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart, my clear intentions, taking personal responsibility for who I am in this world. And that includes my thoughts, my beliefs, the choices that I make, the actions that I take, and my responses to the experiences that are around me. Also, to take compassionate action whenever I am called in that direction. I take this peace pledge very seriously, and I now pass it on to you from my peaceful heart to yours. Peace beginning here within me. Peace in and peace out. Thank you so much, Marcy. I receive your peace. Mm. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you Thank so you much, Marcy. So Thank you, everybody. And until tomorrow. Okay. Thank you so much. Wonderful, Joseph. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Marcy.